Hey there, freaking nerds. People are very interested in AMD's ray tracing performance on their GPUs, particularly compared to NVIDIA's GPUs. But a lot of the time I hear a common misconception and I totally get why this misconception exists because it's confusing. Because based on a lot of AMD's marketing materials, it's easy to get the impression that AMD and NVIDIA both took basically the same approach to integrate hardware accelerated ray tracing into their GPUs. However, as I will explain, this is not true. And on the left here, this is something I will explain in a second, but it's my kind of simplified representation of the major differences between them. Because AMD's latest GPUs don't have RT cores, not even RDNA 4, doesn't have any RT cores, but people often talk about it like it does. And so how does AMD implement hardware accelerated ray tracing on their GPUs? To explain, let me talk about ray tracing for a second. Doing ray tracing on the general purpose compute cores, something that NVIDIA calls CUDA cores, is very inefficient. And a lot of it comes down to the very nature of how ray tracing works. Ray tracing in a scene requires navigating a BVH tree millions of times per frame. Yeah, millions per frame. So however many frames per second you're getting, multiply it by that. And the task of tracing just one ray requires many operations on the GPU core. It requires a lot of memory reads and writes, and that incurs a lot of stalls in the GPU pipeline, which is basically like waiting. On top of this, ray tracing and especially path tracing involve a lot of divergent threads due to the crazy and unpredictable behavior of rays in a scene. This divergence in a thread prevents the GPU from parallelizing the traversal of the BVH structure as efficiently, and it leads to wasted cycles where it has to traverse both sides of a branch in order instead of doing them at the same time together. And this comes from when rays that are coherent or moving through a BVH tree in the same way diverge. So like where one hits a wall or bounces off into an opposite direction of one ray that continues on past the wall or maybe gets reflected in an other direction. And this is obviously happening hundreds of thousands of times per second or thousands at least because a lot of rays in a scene come from the same place and they might take a similar path but potentially even more rays are not taking the same path as other rays and therefore create a lot of divergence in the tree that it's navigating and so this creates inefficiency whenever this is needed to be done and ray tracing is especially susceptible to this so it really is not an ideal task for the structure of how gpu cores accelerate operations which is by combining a lot of them together and doing them at the same time but if you're not able to do that it reduces efficiency and so that's a problem that ray tracing would create a lot of on general purpose cores in 2018 though, NVIDIA decided that it was time for ray tracing. And so to prevent these problems in games that use ray tracing, NVIDIA chose to implement dedicated RT cores into their first RTX GPUs, which were released in 2018. And when an NVIDIA RTX GPU needs to trace some rays, it passes that task off mostly to the RT cores, which allows the CUDA cores to do the stuff that they're good at and focus on other operations like traditional raster rendering and compute tasks and anything else. So these RT cores keep everything running efficiently and it increases power efficiency and speed. Two years later, AMD launched their GPUs with hardware accelerated ray tracing. These were their RX 6000 series, which used the RDNA 2 architecture. And the way AMD went about this was by implementing ray tracing units or RTUs into their existing compute units. And so RT units, RT cores, same thing, right? No, that's not the case though. These ray tracing units are not their own cores and they share many resources with the rest of the compute unit. But still, these RTUs offload the most performance intensive part of ray tracing, which is intersection testing. But this approach is not as comprehensive as NVIDIA who in their RT cores offloads intersection testing as well as another expensive task known as BVH traversal. 
which is just like navigating these conditional trees where you go down one side or another. And that's one way they optimize ray tracing to prevent checking geometry that the ray is nowhere near. But AMD does not implement a hardware unit for BVH traversal. So they have to run software on the general purpose cores for BVH traversal. And it is only the intersection testing that is accelerated with physical hardware. In addition to this, on AMD's GPUs, the RTUs, the ray tracing units, aren't given their own dedicated registers, unlike NVIDIA's RT cores. And because of this, the registers within the compute unit have to share with the rest of the processing elements. And these registers are like tiny blocks of memory that hold the data that the cores are actively working on. So they very directly affect how much work can be done at a time on a compute unit. And on AMD's GPUs, the ray tracing units are forced to share the same registers with the rest of the compute unit that is responsible for doing other calculations like raster rendering and compute tasks and anything else. And that's done on the ALUs. The ALUs are where most of the graphics rendering and everything else on a GPU is processed within the compute unit. And that's what they're called on NVIDIA also. So these, so this graphics rendering, these general purpose cores over here, they're sharing this big chunk of memory with the ray tracing units. Whereas in NVIDIA's GPUs, they get their own memory. They get their own registers instead of sharing the registers and most of the resources with the rest of the compute unit. And so that's one of the main reasons why when you enable ray tracing, it slows the game down significantly because it's literally taking memory away from the compute cores that it was otherwise using. And that's, again, on top of the fact that AMD is having to do the BVH traversal in software on the ALUs, unlike NVIDIA, who has their own unit inside the RT core for BVH traversal. And it gets its own registers to keep all that data stored while it's working on it. But even with all that, as we're well aware, even on NVIDIA's GPUs, ray tracing and especially path tracing are very performance intensive and they can significantly decrease the performance of a game. So AMD's approach, while still much faster than a purely software-based ray tracing approach, is impacted a lot more by enabling ray tracing because it's having to repurpose parts of the GPU that when ray tracing is not enabled, it was using for other tasks. But on the other side of the coin, that means that in games or in apps where there isn't any ray tracing being used or where ray tracing is disabled, those RT cores are also disabled basically and just sitting idle, which is generally something you want to avoid as much as possible for power efficiency on any kind of microprocessor. So you can see now why NVIDIA is pushing ray tracing so hard into every game, including old games like RTX Remix, because in games where it's not being used, it is a significant portion of the GPU that is also not being used and just sitting idle. And so you, you can say that if ray tracing is not being used, then the RT cores are wasting space on the GPU. And as we said before, this is opposed to AMD, who dedicated very little silicon space explicitly to ray tracing on their GPUs. And instead, it's able to utilize its hardware either for ray tracing or for other tasks if ray tracing is not being used. And I've mostly been describing how ray tracing works on RDNA 2 GPUs so far. And it is true that AMD has made improvements over time to their hardware acceleration for ray tracing. RDNA 3, for example, added new instructions to the GPU to make traversing the BVH structure a lot more efficient in terms of memory traffic by combining multiple operations into one operation. And then on top of that, RDNA 4 added a lot more. AMD doubled the intersection testing engines, which is again the part that they do accelerate in hardware. So they're able to perform twice as many tests per cycle, which is great. That's huge. And they also implemented dynamic register allocation, which is really great where they're able to dynamically adjust how much space each of them needs throughout the process. And even though these are big improvements, RDNA 3 and RDNA 4 are both iterations on RDNA 2's philosophy to ray tracing. And all these iterative improvements together now mean that on AMD's latest RX 9000 series of GPUs, which are RDNA 4 based, Enabling ray tracing impacts the game's frame rate much less than it does on RDNA 2 or RDNA 3 GPUs, which is compounded even further by the addition of FSR 4, 
which is a machine learning based upscaler exclusive to their new RDNA 4 GPUs, at least for now. And FSR 4 has much better image quality compared to FSR 3, which really makes it more viable to use in more situations and for more people. Or it might even let you use more aggressive upscaling presets, like going down to performance mode. And you really might want to do that because the internal resolution that you're rendering at directly determines the number of rays that need to be traced. So like games trace a certain number of samples per pixel. It could be like one sample per pixel or two or four. And using upscaling, you're able to lower the number of pixels that you're rendering, which is therefore also directly reducing the number of rays traced. And that goes down with each quality preset in upscaling. And you can visualize that like this, where at native 4K on the left here, this is your whole screen at 4K tracing rays for each pixel. And it's running at native resolution here. But then using DLSS super resolution or FSR in AMD's case, you're able to render at a lower rendering resolution, like maybe 1080p. And then you trace the number of rays needed for 1080p. And from there, you upscale that image to 4K. And this is kind of my visual representation of that, getting a 4K output at the end on each of them. But for the DLSS version, only tracing the number of rays that you needed to trace for a 1080p image. I believe this would be the performance preset, but yes, so because of that, upscaling is especially impactful to ray tracing, and it increases performance a lot. And so this is why NVIDIA chose to implement DLSS at the same time as when they implemented their RTX ray tracing features into their GPU, because they complement each other very well. And now that AMD also has a really high quality upscaler, it encourages people using AMD GPUs to use it and get better performance with ray tracing and path tracing especially. And that's not even talking about frame gen or fake frames or whatever. So FSR4 is another huge piece of the puzzle for AMD for achieving parity with NVIDIA for ray tracing performance. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. I plan to make a lot more videos like this this is kind of um, an experimental thing for me, and I'm figuring out my workflow. But yeah, I also want to make a video explaining how they accelerate AI instructions in their GPU, also without adding tensor cores or AI cores to their GPUs. It's not exactly the same story, but it is similar in the way where they are intelligently repurposing parts of their GPU. But yeah, I did a lot of research to make this video, and I want to make Another video also analyzing like the history of AMD and NVIDIA's GPU architectures and how their compute units and CUDA cores have changed over time. Because there's a lot of interesting stuff in there and in how AMD and NVIDIA both chose different ways of doing things over time and how they have also influenced each other. But yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in that. Hopefully this video makes sense, but I will be, but I can answer any questions in the comments or I can make a follow-up if people are interested in that. But yeah, bye for now. Peace.